Welcome to Lutherans Alive. This is the program that seeks to tell the stories of Lutheran Christians and our ministries here in southwestern Pennsylvania. We believe that God has done wonderful things for us and that He's doing wonderful things through us. I'm your host, Pastor Tony Schneck, and with me on the program today, we are pleased to welcome Kim Charlton from the Stewart Avenue Lutheran Church, the congregation in the Carrick neighborhood of Pittsburgh, south of the city. Kim, welcome today. Thank you. We're very glad to have you, and uh, maybe you could start, if you wouldn't mind, just by telling us uh, what are some of the, the uh, responsibilities, the roles that you uh, fulfill uh, there as a part of the Stewart Avenue uh, congregation? Okay, I'm, um, I'm in the parish ed. I'm the head of the parish ed committee. Mm -hmm. I uh, lead the youth group, and I teach high school, Sunday school, and I teach confirmation. Okay. So you're doing a lot with the young people in the congregation. Of course, Christian education is for adults as well, but, uh, but a lot with the youth that you uh, get to do. And how long have you been doing that? Um... I guess the longest was teaching Sunday school. I've been doing that 26 years. And the youth group, about 24 years. Teaching confirmation, about 18 years. Okay. Did you grow up in the uh, congregation at Stewart Avenue? No. Um, 40th, St. John's, 40th Streets, now condominiums. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you grew up in the Pittsburgh area? Yes, yes. And, uh, and you, you've been a part of the, the Stewart Avenue congregation for a, a number of years now. Mm -hmm. um, so that must keep you pretty busy. Yes. <laughs> uh, our, our volunteers in our congregation are very important, very valuable, and they put in a lot of hours. Uh, tell us about some of the things uh, uh, sp specifically uh, that, that you're doing right now as a, as a part of the, the congregation. What are some things that are going on at Stewart Avenue right now? Uh, well, actually, we were just out here at the Synod uh, Confirmation. We had a confirmation retreat with the confirmation kids, which are uh, eight girls. Six, seven were here for the weekend. Uh, that was fun. We focused on women of the Bible, since they're all girls, and um, uh, inner beauty, things like that. We had a good time. Um, my high school class, we are doing this thing uh, called the Amazing Grace and uh, it's a race, and every week we, uh, we have a Bible lesson, and we end up with a challenge, and uh, they, they pick teams, and it's the girls against the boys, so the boys are the fighting red lambs, and the girls are the um, Uzziahs, <laughs> King Uzziahs, and uh, we do things like scavenger hunt. Um, we, the one, our one lesson was mapping, we learned the, you know, how to read the maps in the Bible, and then we had um, a, a map race to see who can finish the map puzzle. Um, we have a Facebook page, which we put a lot of that stuff on there. We had a, a pumpkin carving contest. The, the girls won because the boys was terrible, but that's on Facebook. <laughs> um, what our last uh, battle was the Battle of the Bells. Our church has... Um, the colored bells, I don't know if you've seen them. Um, they're colored bells and the kids will, the little kids can do it. Uh, they just ring the bell of the color. And um, so we had the high school uh, battle at the bells. And so we put that on Facebook and the girls won, you know, that one. They decorated their areas. Um, the boys, the, they did a boxing ring type deal with two fighting lambs and the girls made a castle. Um, yeah. It sounds as if there are a lot of creative things happening in your Sunday school and in your confirmation program. What, what strikes me is it, when people think of Sunday school or confirmation, uh, I, I think some people who may not be f familiar with how we do things may get the idea that it's just a teacher talking to a class and seated in a classroom setting and it's and there's not much interaction and there's not much going on not to put too fine a point on it some people might think that it's boring mm -hmm. <laughs> but what you described doesn't sound the least bit boring it sounds very interactive it sounds uh, as if it's very creative uh, a lot of um, 
a lot of deductive learning, uh, and uh, a lot of the Sunday school curriculum uh, that we have these days um, is like that. A lot of hands-on stuff, a lot of activities. Um, yes. can, can you speak to that? Do you think Sunday school has changed over the years? Christian education has changed to go more in that direction. How have you seen? How have you seen that change? Uh, yeah, it's a it's a lot more interactive. And I know the kids. I mean, actually, on this past retreat, uh, one of the girls said to me that they they like to be able to talk. <laughs> you know, we were just talking about class and confirmation and and they said they like to be able to talk and ask questions. They ask questions that I can't answer, but I think it's okay to say I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. But um Or at least maybe I can maybe try to find out the answer for you if if you don't know. But to I mean to have an honest answer like that. Yeah. And say I don't know. I mean that's the kids respect that. Yeah. Because you can't fool them anyway. No. If no. you try to make up something <laughs> they're going to see right through you. So you might as well be honest and say, well, I don't know. Right, you know? yeah. And that makes you a very genuine person in that respect. Yeah. Yeah, and, and they like to have fun. I, I know these kids, this, this confirmation class, um, the whole bunch of them has, haven't missed a Sunday. Uh, my son's actually their teacher at, on Sunday. Um, and what he has, he, I mean, I don't know if you can, I wouldn't consider it bribery, but every class they show up, they... He puts a dollar into their charity of their choice, so they haven't been <laughs> they haven't been missing at all, and uh, yeah, they're they're very uh, it's a very exciting class this year. Not that they're not all exciting, but these guys are they're just really into everything and they're excited. We haven't really did the fam thirty hour famine for a while because it's I, I you know I've been getting down to it and the kids it's so hard to find time for them, but these. These girls are, are they want to do it this year, so we're could you say to that. could you say a few words about what that is? There might maybe some folks who may or may not know what the thirty hour famine is and oh, okay. uh, and what that's all about and how people are helped through that yeah it's it's through world vision and um, you the kids they don't eat for thirty hours. Um, we don't stay at church th for the whole thirty hours, but uh, We'll stay Saturday night from about 7. They'll quit eating at uh, 11 o'clock that uh, Saturday. We'll meet up at church at 7, then stay over till Sunday at dinner time when we'll break the fast, which we'll eat. But the whole time we're at church, we will learn. Um, we'll have lessons on hunger, um, what can be done to help hunger. We'll also um, have fun things. We're going to have this um, famine apprentice. So I'm going to again split them into teams they're uh, we're kind of going to go by the celebrity apprentice um, and have uh, gourmet crackers that each team's going to make and we'll you know we'll be out on the streets seeing if people will pay for them and buy our crackers and the money will go to hunger um, we're going to have them design a set to portray you know who they're helping in this um, they play games like uh, there's a one game called the tribe game, and uh, in which you know one girl might have um, only one leg, another one from a vitamin A deficiency might be blind, so won't blind fold her. Those who have very little to eat will wear a backpack full of you know heavy stuff so that they can feel the. The other thing is because they're not eating for 30 hours, they're going to experience what hunger feels like anyway. And that's almost the biggest lesson in this because, you know, we, we write letters to the president at about the 26th hour and they realize how hard it is to act, just even to write a letter. And, and we explain that, you know, kids go to school all the time and that's how they, you know, that's how they, you know, can't really think because they're so hungry and, um, you know, not nourished like, like they are. Um, it's, so it's, it's a learning experience, and it helps, you know, helps raise money for, for hunger. You know, the one year we did, um, we had uh, our display was we put all these little crosses that we made out of popsicle sticks with, uh, we cut out um, pictures of the kids f from World Vision magazines, and we put that, you know, that they were, um, like, 
almost little gravestones because they die every time you take a breath a child dies from hunger so um, yeah and we put candles and it was real powerful we had people stopping all over the place giving us money for the famine mm -hmm. so. it can be a very eye-opening eye experience and the youth the young people in our churches really do want to make a difference right. we're going to talk some more about that and about uh, more about what's going on at Stewart Avenue after we take a short break here on Lutherans Alive okay thank you Welcome back to Lutherans Alive. We continue our conversation with Kim Charlton from the Stewart Avenue Lutheran Church in Carrick. Uh, we're glad to have Kim today. Kim, it sounds as if there's a lot going on in terms of youth ministry and Christian education there at Stewart Avenue. Can you say some words about the support of the, the congregation, how important that is uh, that the congregation support these, these ministries? and. Uh, are, are they indeed very supportive at Stewart Avenue? Uh, yes, yes. We have a lot of great adults that um, they come through and they, uh, they'll they support them in uh, mentoring, um, financially, um, just being there for them. I mean, we have, a, we have a lot of events that are both interactive with adults and children. Um, we just put on a play. Um, and then there were none. It was kind of a mystery dinner uh, where actually they raised money for hunger there for the um, Lutheran World Relief. And that was fun. They, we had a mixture of kids and adults. I'm supposed to put that on Facebook too, but I've got to shorten it down because it's too long to, to post on there. But um, that, uh, that was one event we had. And then we had the um, adult Bible Bowl. The kids always do Bible Bowl. So I thought well, we would give the adults a taste of what they actually go through. So we had adults studying. We, we had them study the first, second, and third John. And um, uh, you know, they complained, just like the kids, but they, they studied. And we're setting up for that. And like I said, we have a lot of people that help with all the events, you know, things we have for kids. If the fam and I'll have a lot of adults there making our last dinner, and you know, they'll come up and be supportive. But this one, um, we set it up. We had our Bible Bowl, and I, I had a funny idea because I worked for um, Mr. John of Pittsburgh, the portable toilets. And uh, so we were just thinking, how do you decorate for an adult Bible Bowl? And uh, so I, got, I asked my company if we can use the Porta John. So we brought in um, four Porta Johns into the Fellowship Hall, and we, we labeled them. We had 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, and 4th John. We did lock them so no one would use them, though. <laughs> we have pictures of that on our Facebook page, too. That was fun. But, uh, now, that is very creative. Yeah, it was funny. That is very creative. Yeah. yeah. It sounds as if uh, you've mentioned a few times uh, the Facebook page. And um, it, it strikes me um, how important and how popular the social, um, social media mm -hmm. is these days. Well, what an impact social media is having. I mean, that, that can be a good thing. You hear, about, hear a lot about the, the evils of it, but it, it can be a very, like a lot of other things, can be used for, uh, you know, can be used for uh, uh, bad purposes or can be used for some good. Can you say some things about how the, how the Facebook page has made an impact in the life of your congregation and your youth group? Oh yes, uh, I I must I love Facebook. I think it, it's an easy way to get all the kids. They're right there. I can you know a lot of times message them and they're right there. I can you, know, you coming, you coming. Um, the other thing is I put all their stuff in. I put uh, you know everything they do on there. I've learned with the high school kids not to tag them because they might not want it going right on their page. <laughs> but I'll message them and say hey, I put that on there, you know, and then then they will go look. Um, uh, we have um, videos galore on there, everything you know we do. We, we have usually on 
uh, the Saturday before Palm Sunday, we have a big cleaning of the church, and we have fun doing that. And even those, even those videos are on there. Um, things that they do, they go bowling, and we put that on there. But um, but yeah, it's it's a good it's a good thing to have the positive influence on there. I know the one lady, she she belongs to a dog, uh, you know, where they show the dogs, the show dogs, yeah. So she's in a big organization with all the, her friends that show dogs, and they just go on and on how they love watching our, um, our stuff that we put on there. Then I have another uh, person from Mr. John, actually she's one of um, uh, friends of one of our Mr. John people, who she watched it and she kept saying she, it reminded her so much of Sunday school when she was a kid that she went back to church. She lives in New Jersey, but she went back to church in New Jersey because she missed it. You know, so I think it has a lot of a good to it. Yes, it does have bad. Um, but uh, good, it's, it's good to be on there and, and it's kind of good to, you know, a good way to keep in touch with the youth. Is, is the page, is it for youth and adults? I mean, you have adults on, on the, the youth page mm -hmm, as well? Yeah. yeah, it's just Stewart Avenue Lutheran Church. It's, okay. You have to do it from your own page, so it's, it, I, I created it from my account, and then I created the Stewart Avenue Lutheran Church page, made a, a, a other, some other adults, you, you know, you can make as many administrators as you want so that they can add stuff to and um, yeah, we, we add just, you know, it's, it's nice. We add that all in there, prayers and, you know, things like that. Right. There's issues, you know, we've had, being from the city, you do have some sad things that happen. And so we put that on there for people to pray for. Sure, sure. Uh, he, not that there isn't sad things anywhere. <laughs> sure, certainly, certainly. You, it, one of the things that's, that's been a part of our conversation thus far um, are the adults who help out with youth ministry and Sunday school, adults like yourself and others. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not just you doing it. No. It's not just you and the pastor. Right, no. It, but mm -hmm. a, a host of adults who are involved in the lives of the, the young people there and in the programs and activities that you have. Could you say a few words about the importance of that, uh, having f good, faithful Christian adult role models as a part of the youth ministry there? Uh, yes, we have um, we have all all various kind of ages. We have um, uh, we we have a lot of good adults. I wish I wish I would actually. We wrote a cookbook once um, for one of the years that we had to uh, raise money for the kids to go to the uh, convention that they have the youth thing. And that's what I wrote something in the back of that about the, the people at our church because they just overwhelm me with how, you know, how well they support, even from the smile to the cards. I mean, you know, we have a couple that anytime the kid will do anything, you know, anything, they'll send them a little card saying that how good of a job they did here. Um, and we have about three or four people that do that that are always sending little notes of encouragement. Um, we have a mentor program with our confirmation students, so every every uh, student has a mentor, and they'll come to one class a month, and they'll also, you know, just guide them through their two years, you know, and they see if they need any help or, you know, they're pretty, they're really good too. And then, you know, we just have our general. I mean. Uh, Jerry just comes to mind, you know, just her smile every time she sees a kid. And they just, you know, they like that, you know. Um, I know my son, and he's, he's now 30 and teaching Sunday school, but he's the three Johns, he'd call them, not the three Johns that were in our, but not, <laughs> not those Johns, but the three, uh, there was three men there, all named John, and, you know, he just totally um, contributes a lot of his faith and growth um, from their interaction to him, you know, growing up. It's so very important. I mean, kids have their parents as role models and examples, primary uh, examples of, of, of uh, how to live and what to believe, faith in the home. But then you've also got the, the congregation, the church community, good caring adults are 
uh, a crucial, necessary ingredient in any youth ministry and Christian education program. We're going to talk some more about that. We'll talk some more uh, with Kim right after we have another break here on Lutherans Alive. Welcome back to Lutherans Alive. We continue talking with Kim Charlton from the Stewart Avenue Congregation. Kim, tell us a little bit about your own journey, if you would. How did you get to where you are, and what do you think it was that um, drew you in uh, to be so involved with Christian education and youth ministry? Um, I guess it's, it would be where I, I grew up. I grew up in Bloomfield. Um, I went to St. John's 40th Street, but not because uh, that was the church of my family. Um, I wasn't from, um, you know, a really great family, um, and so we didn't go to church. But I had this grandmother, uh, the love of my life. I mean, she died when I was five, but I'll never forget her. I mean, ten. I, I met her when I was five. Um, and she couldn't walk very well, so the little church at the bottom of the street was um, St. John's 40th Street. So uh, and she was a churchgoer her whole life. She was actually my great-grandmother. And uh, so we walked to, the, to that little church. And like I said, when, she was t when I was 10, she died. And I think, I don't know what it was about that church, but I think maybe she made people promise to, to look out for me because that church just, you know, they just were amazing. Um, they sent, any, I never needed money for anything. Everybody always sent me here or there. I went to the Synod Convention and Agape for a, a week and you know they were just really good people and um, and and so I, it's my way of giving back and just you know I just I see kids um, you know kinda like me a lot and and I like um, I just like to be there for them I just like to you know uh, my faith is so important to me, and I don't think I would have had it if that wasn't for that little church. And, it, well, no, if it wasn't for Jesus, and then that little church, <laughs> and my yeah. grandmother. Yeah. yeah. But, they, but your grandmother and the folks at that church, they were following Jesus. Yes. They yes. were doing what he would do. Yes. And they took you and sort of adopted you, made you a part of that family. Yes. And, and, and now you're giving back. Yes. Yeah, I just want to be like the people at that little church. And Pastor Keith Grill was the pastor then. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite pastors. <laughs> so, as, as you're helping young people today and being there for them, what do you what do you see as some of the issues facing young people today? I mean, I know what what some of the young people in my own congregation are going through and experiencing, but you know, it may, it may vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. How? Um, what do you see there in uh, in your neighborhood? The, the kids that are there. What are they? What are the issues that they're facing? Well, um, just this past week we had that retreat, like I said, and we, we focused on a lot on inner beauty. And uh, one girl had a really, really uh, powerful thing happen to her. Um, she had a best friend who moved away to Ohio, and um, on Facebook she posted a picture of herself next to this model and, you know, said, do I look like her? And she just got so abused. Um, you know, and I don't know, there's always things in people's lives, that's what I was trying to tell the, you know, my student. There's so many things in people's lives, but that uh, she ended up killing herself. And not that I can say that that's totally all the reason, that's what I told her. But, you know, I know that kids are so, um, you know, they're, they're so easily uh, hurt, you know. And so, so I told them, I said, turn it off. Turn off Facebook. If something's on there that hurts you, there's a little X. X, kill it right there. You know, don't let these things, um, you know, and also to be careful. We talked a little bit to be careful what they put on Facebook, you know. So it's, if you wouldn't want your grandmother or me to see it, don't put it there, you know. Um, but we had, good, we had a good week. It was so, um, 
It was so, that's so, so much the focus of kids and, you know, trying to be the stars or the, you know, the magazine, you know, people. And, and um, I was like, no, we made um, covenants, the beauty covenants. And I, and I said, so, you know, let's, for, for the whole year, you know, let's make these covenants of how you can be more beautiful on the inside. You know, like what can you do to be more, uh, one girl said she can probably calm down, <laughs> calm down a little bit more. And uh, being uh, kind to others and, um, you know, all these things that would make you a beautiful person. And uh, that was neat. And the other thing that I find really crazy, you know, you're always trying to get them to listen to K-Love or the Christian music. But if you say it, you know, they don't want it. So on the way home, as we're driving home, I says, what do you guys listen to? Oh, Kiss. Okay, I'll turn it on. And then they said, oh, what do you listen to? And I said, well, I listen to K-Love. I said, but actually I have some cool songs on my iPod or my iPhone. And I turned it on and right there, that song, Beautiful, and I was, it was so powerful. I was like, thanks. Sometimes God's just right there in the car with you. And I said, this is such a good song with our theme for the weekend. I said, actually, your friend could have, you know, your friend could have listened to this. Would have been good for her. And uh, yeah, they all, they wanted to know. And we listened to that music all the way home, and I didn't even start to go there because sometimes they just, you know, they don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to hear it. But they actually want me to, you know, find them the songs. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. great. You're definitely. Um, doing some wonderful things there, Kim. God is doing some wonderful things in that, in that neighborhood and with your young people, and it is so important. And uh, I know in, in my own congregation, I treasure those adults who have a heart for the young people and want to um, and want to reach out to them, just be a part of their lives and be there for them and listen to their to their joys and their sorrows and yeah. uh, and uh, be a part of their lives. Thanks for what you're doing. Thanks for your continued service to, to Christ and His church, and thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thanks for being with us today on Lutherans Alive. From wherever you're watching, in your neighborhood, near your neighborhood, whether you're in Carrick or wherever you are, there's a Lutheran congregation in or near your neighborhood who would be very pleased to welcome you. Won't you come and worship with us, and won't you see us next time on Lutherans Alive.